Yeah! Welcome to Adjuster TV. My name is Chris Stanley, and I'm here on the east coast of North Carolina at Minnesai Beach, where we're expecting a major storm surge to come in from Hurricane Dorian, as much as up to 10 feet by some reports. Now, I'm here today to share with you how you can expect auto flood claims quick and easy. But before we get to that, I'm going to throw it over to Max Olson so he can update you on the rest of what's going on in Dorian all along the East Coast. Hey everybody, this is Max Olson with Adjuster TV. We're here just south of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And as you can see here behind me, we have some intense storm surge. It's coming in. It's flooding this area just off the coast. We also have hurricane force winds. We've seen winds in excess of 80 miles per hour, potentially even getting higher if this eye wall comes ashore. It is still slightly offshore along with the eye, just like we've been talking about for the last few days. However, there is still potential for that to happen either here in South Carolina or further along the coastline in North Carolina. All right, so we can see here that the eye of the hurricane is just offshore. However, that eye wall is kind of gradually, it appears making its way onshore. At least the outer portions of it are kind of grazing the coast. The most intense part is still offshore but there's potential up here towards Wilmington or out towards the Outer Banks that that could change. So our plan is we're, we're right here in between Georgetown and Myrtle Beach. We're going to track with this for a while. If this doesn't make landfall we're going to follow it potentially all the way up to Wilmington and we'll see what happens from there. Uh, another thing that has been a big concern is uh, tornadoes on the northeast quadrant. There have been uh, probably close to a dozen tornadoes, at least tornado warnings. And I know Myrtle Beach had a couple this morning that caused some damage, and there's been quite a few others confirmed up by the Wilmington area. So that is another concern on top of the winds from the hurricane, on top of the storm surge from the hurricane, on top of the flooding from all the rains falling further inland. There's a lot of punches being thrown with this system, and it does not want to be taken lightly. So anyways, this has been Max with Adjuster TV. And if you want to know what an independent adjuster is, please visit adjustertv.com. Hey Matt, I'm headed out to the east coast of North Carolina and as we're driving out towards the coast from the middle of the state, we're going through tornado warnings, we're going through heavy rain, and right now it's kind of taking a break so we can uh, do this uh, update for you real quick. Now kind of the question I keep getting is will there be a lot of auto flood claims? And obviously no one knows how many flood claims are going to be in the Carolinas, Florida, Georgia over the course of time. Uh, but the thing to watch for is not just the coast where the hurricane is obviously the most exciting watching uh, the news, uh, but it's also on the inland. Places like Lumberton, North Carolina tend to flood a lot. That's kind of I pass home base. And from the rivers of like Cape Fear or New Bern, the Noose River, the flooding happens and people are kind of caught sometimes unexpected. But it's not even just rivers. Sometimes in cities where the piles of water get high in low-lying road areas, people drive through, experience flooded engines, experience water getting into their car. And so as IA, we need to be prepared to handle flood claims all over the state, whether you're on a cat or just handling daily claims. So I wanted to give you some quick tips, uh, you watching of how you can inspect flooded vehicles without getting too overwhelmed. Although there's a lot to think about, there's really a few major things we need to document and determine when inspecting a flood vehicle. Number one, we got to find out how high the water was on the vehicle. And most of the time, it's very obvious. The water level or the water line, uh, if you open up the driver's door, a lot of times you can find the water line in that door jam. Or if you can't find the water line, that's a good sign that it might not have gotten inside the vehicle. So if the vehicle's not wet and you can't find a water line or a debris line on that vehicle, then it may not have gotten inside the car. But if you do see a debris or a flood line or a flood level that you can document, take a picture of it and um, go ahead and document that in your notes. That is what the insurance companies want to know. How high did that water get? Second thing you need to look for, you need to pop the hood. You must pop that hood. Open up the air box. So bring a tool set with you, just a small tool set with little sockets and screwdrivers to open up that air box. See if there's water inside it, especially for vehicles that were in motion that go through large puddles. It sucks up that water through the air vent and there's water inside the air breather, the air box. So open it up, look for signs of water. Last thing is you need to look inside the engine. Uh, look at 
pull the dipstick, look at the oil, and see, is it milky? Does it look like Nestle's uh, chocolate milk? Or does it look like standard oil? Because if it's looking like uh, light-colored chocolate milk, it's likely water mixed with that oil, and that engine may be compromised. So there's engine inside that, and you need to at least document it. Even if you're not replacing the engine, document it. And Matt, if uh, your viewers need any additional resources on how to write flood claims on vehicles, they can head over to ipath.com slash flood. I've gathered a bunch of resources there, including instructions, full set of instructions of how to inspect uh, flood damage vehicles uh, from my book, and as well as those guides and templates to help them identify uh, what level of flood it was in a hurry. Hey guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next update.